Each week, American History TV's Real America brings you archival films that help provide context to today's public affairs issues. what the situation is well, right now. We're in complete darkness here now. The eye of this thing, or the most, or the greater part of it, must be right here, right now. Because there's no surging in the air. There's one continuous blow. And uh, I'm telling you, she's a blowing and she's a shaking. At 11.46, all power fails at the New Orleans Weather Bureau, and the wind gauge blows off the roof. Falling trees are knocking out telephone lines all over town. By midnight, Betsy's overwhelming the city. Gusts are reaching 150 miles an hour, and all the church bells in town are tolling wildly in the wind. Baton Rouge is next in line. The winds in the Baton Rouge area are increasing in velocity to hurricane force, with winds up near 100 miles per hour by 1.30 a.m. In the state emergency operating center, Governor John McKithen and his staff, disaster coordinator Leon Gary, and civil defense director Marshall Capel are working with Red Cross, Public Health, and Salvation Army, the welfare groups, and National Guard. Emergency calls are pouring in from all over the state, including one from National Guard headquarters at New Orleans. Jackson Barracks, Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge. Flooding now at Jackson Barracks. You're kidding. No one's kidding. Betsy's bringing in danger from a totally unexpected quarter. Her winds are pushing a 16-foot wall of water out of Lake Bourne in the Gulf, the greatest tidal surge in Louisiana history. Sweeping over the Delta, Plaquemines Parish, St. Bernard, topping the highest levees, roaring across the Industrial Canal into the southeast section of New Orleans. No one knows the full size of the disaster yet. In Betsy's wake, there's only darkness, confusion, and death. Daybreak and devastation. And the church bells are quiet now. Hurricane winds have done their worst. The tidal surge has topped them. The fatality list is as follows. 25-year-old Mrs. Joanne Mayu, her body was found in the Franklin Avenue ditch. She was swept away by floodwaters in the flooded area. People are still being pulled off roofs and out of the water. Another small Dunkirk. I saw just a big wave coming right at the house. It looked like it's taller than the house. And I heard from my husband and he ran. My brother-in-law called the same door he got the last call through. And he screamed, tell him to get out. The levee broke. Well, we swam down the apartment. It was flooded to the second floor, and they lifted us into the boat. The water was coming that high. Another 25,000 refugees to swamp already overcrowded shelters. 